So, Brooke, George Allen, would you please step forward? Well, <laughs> thank you, Ann, and uh, thank you, Arlington Republican Club, for allowing me to moderate. I am a little nervous that if I step back or as I pass the microphone, it's going to get y'all's ears, so I'm going to try not to do that. Um, I was given quite a few questions um, and then um, by members and some people came up and gave me some questions. So these are not my questions, they are not my views. Um, I am just the moderator here and our first race is going to be the District Family Court, the 233rd. So if Kenneth Newell and Lori DeAngelis Griffin will come forward. and. Our format's going to be the same for everyone. So we're going to do two-minute introductions. Each candidate has two minutes to introduce themselves. We're going to have approximately three questions for every person. We'll rotate who goes first. And they'll have one-minute answers. And then you'll have a one-minute close. Mr. Ashby is our um, timekeeper, and he was told to be strict. <laughs> so he will be strict on the time. Um, so I will let you guys make your opening statement, and Mr. Newell, since you're closest, we'll start with you. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is, as you said, is Kenneth Newell, and as you know, I'm running for the 233rd District Court. Uh, I'd like to take a moment just to let you know a little bit about me. As mentioned, uh, you, well, I've mentioned in previous times, you may have heard me say that I'm the 15th of 16 children. I'm a Bronze Star veteran. Uh, I have uh, hold a Master's of Business Administration degree and various other things. And I'll tell you why I think those things are important. Being the 15 to 16 children, you kind of learn a lot about working with people. You know, you have to, you know, when you're sleeping in the bed, five to a bed, you kind of learn, you got to get along in the bed, right? And then outside of that and everything else. Well, I learned a lot from that. And I had strong parents who taught me strong values, to, to love people, to do what's right, and I think that carries a long way. Additionally, I said I was a Bronze Star veteran, and as a uh, veteran in the United States Army, uh, I was in two wars. Being in war and giving orders and telling people what to do that puts their life in jeopardy gives you a very good understanding and appreciation for the orders you've given. You know that you can't give an order that is, is uh, should I say, light in the wallet. That order has to have substance, it has to have meaning, and you have to know that when you're giving that order, that that person who's receiving that order, life is on the line. I think that carries over to being a judge in family court. Families are important, and you have to take care of them and make sure the orders you give for them are very relevant. And finally, uh, in my last 10 seconds, I have an MBA degree that will help me with administering this court. And I believe that that's important to, uh, to be able to be fiscally responsible, to do everything that needs to do to make sure that our families are well taken care of. My name is Kenneth Newell, and I thank you. Thank you. Mr. Griffith, I'm gonna see how far this will reach. Hi everyone, my name is Lori DeAngelis Griffin and I'm also running for the 233rd District Court. Just a little bit about me, I grew up here in uh, the HEB area, went to Bell High School, my mom uh, taught school in HEB for over 20 years, my dad was an air traffic controller here uh, in, at the DFW airport. I'm married, I've been married for 18 years, I have two kids, a 16 year old Cole and a 14 year old Carson, they both go to Martin High School. I have been involved in the Republican Party for years. I first voted in 1984 for Reagan. I've been the president of the Cowtown Republican Club. I've uh, gone to the last couple of TFRW state conventions and worked to help our family law judges keep their benches for the last 15 years. What I think is important and what I really want to emphasize tonight is that I've practiced family law for 26 years. So every day, I've gone to court and represented moms and dads and children in family law matters. And for those of you who don't know what we do over in family law court, we do divorce, child custody, um, we support, uh, enforce child support orders, we do termination of parental rights, we represent children who've been removed from their home because of family violence or drug use. So what we deal with every day in family law is very important. And I believe that we need a judge 
who has years of experience in that area. And if you take away nothing from this tonight, I hope that you know that I'm a candidate that has 26 years of family law experience. And not only that, I've mediated almost 700 family law cases. And so in mediation, what we do is we get the parties together and we help them resolve their dispute so that they don't have to go to the family law courthouse. Thank you. Thank you. You know, if y'all don't mind, I'm going to ask you to stand and stand closer since we're working with um, one microphone and it's not uh, cordless. So our first question will go to Mr. Newell, and y'all will have the same questions. If you became aware of unethical conduct on the part of a lawyer in a case in which you were presiding, how would you handle it? And... Do you believe judges should be required to report attorney misconduct? Thank you very much. If I became aware of misconduct of, of an attorney, is the question. I think that if I become aware of any misconduct, first thing I need to do is try to figure out if it's true. If something is going on, uh, before you start running and sounding an alarm, I think it's always important to validate that information. Uh, and if that information has an element of truth to it, then I will talk with the individual involved. And if that individual is aware of that ethical breach, then uh, I will have to take the actions necessary. If the actions can't be remedied at the lowest level, then I, I believe I would have a, a responsibility to report that. But I believe it would be my responsibility to always try to resolve any conflict at the lowest level. Well, I would hope that we would never have to deal with that, but I understand that sometimes that does occur. And so I think that the first thing that I would do is I would reach out to the administrative judge and ask the administrative judge what's the best way to deal with that. But I do think, and I think we probably have had that occur in the past, if someone, for example, if somebody came into court and their bar card wasn't active, then I think you do have an obligation to report that. Thank you. Ms. Griffith, you'll get this one first. On Facebook, there are several pages that are posting very negative posts. What is your opinion of the negative articles being posted? I'm sorry. Judge. Sorry. So I guess if you trip the judge, maybe <laughs> knock the judge down, and that doesn't work out very well. Um, I can tell y'all that if y'all look at myself and you look at Mr. Newell, on our Facebook page, you're not going to see anything negative, okay? I respect Kenneth. I respect his service. What all the, the only thing that I want to talk about is experience and qualifications. And so that's what I think we need to do. I think Republicans need to support Republicans, and I think we need to focus on the positive attributes of candidates and not the negative things. I echo Lori's uh, response because, again, as I, some of you may have heard me say this in the past, Lori is not my enemy. She's my colleague. We, we are running for the same bench because we feel we're called to do a, do a service. And that service is what we're here for, not to pull each other down. Uh, I respect Lori. As, uh, one of the things that, that really is true is one of us will be the judge of the 233rd District Court. The other person is going to have to appear before that judge. <laughs> you know? I, I keep that in mind every day. <laughs> Thank you. And I will say, every time I have seen y'all at a forum, you have been very uh, classy and courteous to each other. <laughs> Mr. Newell. What it, to, to what extent have you practiced in family law, and what was the most difficult case and why? I've been practicing law for, uh, I'm in my seventh year practice, six full years in my seventh year, and all of that time has been in family law. Uh, like I said, I came from the military side where I did a lot there for 20 years, but now in my sixth year practice. Uh, I've helped, I've dealt with, I think, almost every kind of case in family law. The one that I think was the most challenging was that I was asked to serve as an ad litem on a Munchausen by proxy case. Uh, and that was a, a lot of facts, a lot of things that went along with that. And looking out for those kids in that case was a very important job. 
and I was pretty pleased to be able to do that. Some of the toughest cases that we handle are uh, cases where kids are involved or there's abuse. And about five years ago, I was appointed to represent seven little kids that were removed from their home by CPS. <laughs> and um, the oldest child was the, per was the child that took the brunt of the abuse. And um, so she is legally blind now because of the abuse um, that her mom did to her. And mom actually went to prison for 27 years. And one of the reasons mom was convicted is because they had actually had DNA on the bat that mom used to abuse this child. And so one of the things that I had to do that I've never done in 26 years is I had, I didn't have to, but I was asked to by the judge to go to the foster home and explain to the siblings that their mom was going to prison and not coming home. And then when the younger kids said, well, that's the older daughter, the one that suffered the abuse, that's her fault because she was mean to mama. No, that's because mama was mean to her. So that's the hardest case I've ever dealt with. Thank you. This will be the last question. Uh, Ms. Griffith, who are your judicial role models and why? Well, I, I know it's correct, or what you're supposed to say is Anton Scalia, and I mean, he is a role model because he says that the Constitution is not a living, breathing document. I mean, it's a text, and we're supposed to look at it as a text and not try to interpret what every what they meant uh, back then, and, but what do they really mean now? Um, but I would also say that the judges that we have in Tarrant County are also role models to me. My entire career has been, been in Tarrant County. We have fantastic judges that make sound decisions every day and come to work every day to do the best they can for Tarrant County. I would agree, uh, and I'd start out with the local judges because one of the things that I did when I started in 2013, or not, it was 2013 when I started a group, uh, called the Mentor Luncheon, and I went to every judge in the family law court, and we sat down with them, and they had the opportunity to mentor us uh, and help us to learn the things that we needed to know. Judge, what are we doing wrong in your court? And each one of them, from uh, the associates to the, uh, to the districts to the 4D judges, they all mentored us. On the higher level, I guess I look at Clarence Thomas. Not for the obvious reason of both of our good looks. <laughs> Thomas has a philosophy of, you know, I mean, he, he, he's a straight, uh, you know, interpreter of the law, but then he also has one mouth and two ears. He does more listening than he does talking. So I respect that about Clarence Thomas. Thank you all both. I'm going to ask the two candidates for the District Juvenile Family Court 323 if you will make your way up here. And I am going to allow you all to close. Ms. Griffith, would you like to go first or last? I'll give you the choice since he went first on the open. I'm so and polite, I'll let Kenneth go first. <laughs> <laughs> Our polite candidates closings. One minute. And again, I thank you. I, I know that this brief moment is not enough for you to really get to know me or us, but I invite you to go to my website, KennethForJudge.com, uh, my Facebook page, Kenneth Dual for Judge, and also to call me. Uh, I would love to, to answer any questions you have further. You can find my, web, my, cell, my phone number on my website, or if you want my cell number, I can give you that. If uh, don't have enough time, I think, for you to write it down here. But I'd love to answer any questions you have further. My purpose of being here is to serve. My life has been about service. I spent, as I mentioned, 20 years in the military serving you. I, I remember being in the desert, looking up at the stars and thinking, my family is home, so I, I'm here so my family can be home. I'm here so my friends can be home. I've served you there, and I'm, all I'm looking to do now is to serve the families of Tarrant County to the best of my ability, and I thank you. I appreciate Mr. Newell's service to our country. I appreciate all veteran service. My dad was a veteran. My husband's dad was a veteran. I have a nephew that's in the military, and I've got nothing but the respect for people that are willing to uh, put their lives on the line for all of us. I want to be the judge of the 233rd. I've worked for 26 years preparing for this. I have a heart for service. I have a heart for children. I believe I have the judicial temperament to handle the position. And I know I have the experience. 
If you want to talk to me about anything, my cell phone number is 817-239-1452. Please give me a call. I would love to visit with you. Thank you.